You're the one in the driver's seat, Sam. I can't make you do anything. Coming back to Basswood was your idea. Hello, everyone. Daniel Bloodworth here with Michael Huber. Yo! <laughs> uh, we just got a chance to check out a demo for Twinmere. Uh, this is an E3-style, hands-off developer walkthrough thing. We got to watch 20 minutes of... Yes. Uh, yeah, very high security on yes. this footage. Yes. Email bouncing around. Yeah, yeah. They had, our, <laughs> they had an email bouncing on the screen, so we couldn't record it and get away with it. <laughs> Uh, but they did provide some uh, some B-roll as well. We got about four and a half minutes of B-roll for a 20-minute uh, presentation. Nice. Uh, but yeah, if you're not familiar with Twin Mirror, it is from uh, Don't Nod, the same studio behind uh, Life is Strange and Vampire and Remember Me, uh, and very much more along the lines of Life is Strange uh, narrative-focused uh, adventure, explore and talk to people and stuff like that. First impressions, Heber. Psychological thriller. I mean... <laughs> Right from the get-go, uh, I love how this game sets the tone in, in classic Don't Nod, Life is Strange fashion. You are in a car driving into town. Uh, you're there for your friend's funeral. Sad game. Get ready. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you are driving into town and there's just music playing. And it's just really introspective, really melancholic, and it just really sets the tone and the mood and gives you a chance to, to get into the game and, and just live in it. Yeah, it's very much that kind of Life is Strange thing to where, you know, at first, so at first you just hear like news radio or whatever, but there's just like a lot of like random shots around the car, like show you the stuff like, okay, he's got pill bottles here, right? And, and all mm -hmm. of this kind of thing. And then he pops in a CD and it starts playing this track and you just kind of settle into the mood of this landscape, you know, where he's, he's kind of out in the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, he has to stop and let a train go by. He gets a text message and this is the first time you kind of see part of the story. It's like, you know, are you coming to, to the wake? Um, and that's what he's back in town for is uh, because a friend of his died. Uh, but the first thing that they do in terms of gameplay is they stop at this overlook, uh, which is very much like uh, looking out over Arcadia Bay and Life is Strange 2 where you, you can kind of see the whole town that you're about to visit. Cozy, cozy vibes. Uh, we, you said uh, earlier before this blood, it looks just a little more realistic than Life is Strange. Life is Strange yeah. kind of has that uh, that kind of art like a... What kind of art style? I don't know. It's, it's almost like pastel in a way in Life is Strange. Uh, and this is just a little more grounded, a little more gritty. A little more realistic. Yeah. Um, and we were playing as uh, Sam, who's an investigative reporter. Um, and yeah, what, what's interesting, uh, one of the things they talked about, while you're just kind of walking around, you're like at a trailhead, right? You know, this is just like one of those spots that you stop your car and just take a look at things. Uh, but there are signs of things that just don't feel like they would be related to anything, right? Like, you know, warning about animals and there's like a... Uh, 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 like a sign of like the trail being closed and things like that and he said that some things you don't need to know until you do mysterious <laughs> very mysterious little hint there so definitely planting seeds for later down the line yeah you know uh, and that's probably with the story too you know the conversations Bloodworth you have a conversation seemingly about nothing really important and then that plays into some some maybe choice down the line yeah the one thing that they they kind of put attention to here there was like a like a like a big lock box like a big metal bin for like people to put their food in to protect it from bears or whatever i think yeah uh, and and they you know he just kind of commented it's like well i'm not you know i'm not much of a hunter so i've never used one of these so it's just like interesting thing to to note there yes <laughs> Put something down the line in that thing if you're on the run or plant some food stash. Yeah. Some evidence. <laughs> uh, but then you walk up to the spyglass uh, mm -hmm. and this is really cool. So what happens is he's, he, you start looking through the spyglass and then the whole background, the sky behind him just shatters um, mm -hmm. into like, you know, uh, triangles, broken glass, whatever you want to describe it. And then you're in what they call the Mind Palace. Straight out of Hannibal. <laughs> so you're walking on like these paths of broken glass with these islands of different memories floating in and out. And I noticed you, like, you picked up on some of the different details there. 
yeah, I really like this. You walk by, you see you and your friend playing Pac-Man at an arcade, you know, an arcade cabinet Pac-Man, you know, and just your memories, your important memories are here. Uh, yeah. And then we and we come up to the one related to the spyglass where you're talking to your old friend and uh, your ex-girlfriend who you proposed to and she wasn't feeling it. And yeah. that's that's yeah, clearly so had an impact. Yeah. yeah, there's sort of like two different scenes there, right? So the first is like your friend introducing you to the, to the girl mm -hmm. and then you kind of f fast forward a little bit to this scene where they're at the spyglass and he's like trying to propose to her by like holding the ring like up to the lens of the spyglass she's just she's just seeing a blur she's like what's happening uh but then it gets really really awkward <laughs> yeah she's not feeling it she's yeah. caught off guard she clearly didn't want you to propose uh and that had has an impact on the main character and he he like it's implied that he left town because of this because he got turned down by her again life is strange style not the happiest game uh there are moments of happiness but this is clearly going to be a heavy yeah somber game so be prepared and they're saying that the mind palace has been like really uh reworked since the last time that was uh shown uh when we saw like two years ago mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah i don't have a very clear memory of all that it sounds like you might have know a little bit more yeah, it was more like lines into choices. It wasn't as as uh, you know as uh, the scope wasn't as big. It wasn't like as immersive as you kind of walking through this big glass shattered area. It was more like menu based, if I remember correctly, rather mm, than you it. being in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but when you come out of that, uh, the memory in the mind palace, there's there's a whole slew of different things that happen. Mm -hmm. right away uh the first big thing is a story thing that it's it's going to be interesting to see how it develops uh they say that when he's in the mind palace he just he just loses time he just completely loses track of time and so you've now yes. missed the funeral that you were supposed to attend blood earth i love this i love this mechanic this has so much potential for this game down the like as as you progress in just losing time maybe maybe minutes at a time maybe hours or days at a time how that will impact the story missing important events it just has so much potential for a, from a gameplay and a narrative point of view yeah uh, i'm really excited about that element yeah because he's getting these texts from people right and then then you you basically get one of your first conversation choices there through the text mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and they say that I, it sounds like every choice that you make, it will have some minor effect, some sway in some direction. Yes, small yeah. choices and big choices uh, that clearly, you know, small things like you can reply to the text message, say, hey, I'm on my way, or, you know, the, the dead person won't care, kind of being insensitive. So I imagine that has kind of ripples effect. And then uh, we find out that any characters that you meet in the Mind Palace, you'll then get like uh, bios available in the menu to mm -hmm. check out. Uh, but then we see the collectible system, which is a, 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 an interesting thing for, for them to hint at. Uh, but basically he just like brushes off part of the tree and there is the carving there uh, from him and his ex-girlfriend. Yes. And they talk about how collectibles basically deepening your, your understanding of the lore. So it's not just a little tchotchke or something that you find to stick on your backpack, but these things will hopefully open up a little bit more more meaning uh, behind the different characters and their intentions. Love this blood. Meaningful collectibles, changing your perspective of the story depending on how many of these you find. Awesome. So he's still there on the Overlook. I think this is the round when he's texting. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And there is this figure that you kind of mm. don't see, just kind of in the corner of the frame that yes. talks to him but then disappears before you see him walk away so this is a hint to what's about to happen yes so then we go to the bar uh and our deceased friend had a daughter and mm -hmm. we're her godfather uh she's 13 years old and we meet her outside of a bar joan. talking joan and she uh she you know it's cold outside so you guys get in the car to have a talk and She's like, where did you go? You left me. Like, why did you leave? 
Uh, she feels abandoned by you, and she's kind of giving you a hard time about it, which is understandable. You know, you, you left. Uh, and again, you can handle this conversation in different ways. You get different choices. You say, like, you know, uh, the choice that they made in the, in the demo we saw was, you know, let me, let me try to explain. It's more than just about me and you. You know, after my girlfriend turned down my proposal, I just needed to get out of town. I moved back in with my mom in Connecticut. Oh, yeah, yeah, so. actually, because, yeah, because he was living with his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And so I guess his mom was like, so that's an interest. What is going on with that? It's like his mom was his only option. And so because she lived out of town, he had to leave town. Maybe just an excuse to, you know, maybe, but it's get like, out. I wonder if there's, I, I wonder if there's more to his mental state that goes back beyond, mm -hmm. you know, just this, you know, uh, uh, rejection thing right because I, I, yeah. I think in some ways like I take it as like okay well the rejection thing kind of spiraled him a little bit and maybe some other stuff happened there's, there's got to be a little bit more behind the scenes right yeah. but no it's like maybe he was already having issues maybe he had already lost his job because of being lost in the mind palace and not showing up to a, a, an important meeting or who knows Mm -hmm. And he lost his best friend. What yeah. if he? What he might feel responsible. He might have been involved with it for all we know. Like, because <laughs> uh, that's the next thing that happens is Joan wants you to investigate. She doesn't think her dad would have died this way. He died in a car crash, I, I believe they implied. Uh, and he yeah. said, you know, she said, "Hey, my dad drives like a gra a grandpa. He would never. This wouldn't happen." Like. And she wants you to investigate. She doesn't believe that it was an accident. She suspects foul play. Yeah, and then while she's talking to you, then we see very clearly the double. The double, which is... Sam's well, alter ego. He's got glasses yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, which which to me is what really sets this game apart, uh, really makes it stand out, is mm -hmm. the potential with this double. And, and the Mind Palace as well, kind of these unique elements to this game. But the double gives you advice on how to respond to her and, and what to do. And that leads to one of the game's big choices, uh, which is you can leave her out of it all and, and hide the fact that you investigate what happened to your friend, or you can side with her and say, hey, look, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll find out what really happened. So you can side with the double or with her, but right out of the gate, it is clearly a huge decision that is gonna impact how she perceives you and how the double perceives you as well. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, one of the things that really comes across there for me is that visually that choice looks very different. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other uh, dialogue choices before that are just kind of typical button prompts or whatever, but here you see like those, those icons, those portraits of those characters. So it's like you citing mm -hmm with this person or are you siding with that person? Um, the other thing with the devil that I find very interesting is that they, um, it's just the sense of, of them, like they're influencing you as a player, right? Like yeah. it's, it's one thing for the like, okay, this guy has his alter ego, that he's gonna be talking to the character, but it's like, no, you as a player are now like, Dealing with two streams of information. Yes, Bloodworth. He's being like directly talked to by the person that you want to empathize with. But then the devil is telling me, you know, at, at least you know, putting myself. I wasn't actually playing, of course, but like putting myself in those shoes. The devil is telling me these things that are counter to how I'm reacting. And so, like, oh, okay. Yes, he he yeah. he says, you know, don't give her false hope. That's that's cruel. You gotta leave her out of this. Like, don't. You don't want to. You don't want to get her involved in all this, and yeah, I mean, he's gonna bring up probably some really interesting takes on how to solve things, and it's gonna hit like already. Uh, Blood, I wasn't even playing, and it was like, should I leave her out of it, or or <laughs> should I? Just I wouldn't tell have. Her the, like, the developer one with the devil. I was pro yeah. probably leaning towards towards going with her. For sure, for sure. Because it but feels it, more honest, right? Mm -hmm. But she is thirteen. Do you want to? 13 year old getting caught up in all this yeah totally. what like what happened to her dad we don't know yet so totally it could put her life at risk like mm -hmm. maybe it is best to just leave her out of it until you figure everything out on your own <laughs> it's like oh my gosh i already can't handle these choices um and then uh we see him popping some more pills yes doing a lot uh, of pill popping 
he, yeah, he like pops a pill, waits, you know, 15 seconds, pops another one. Um, so. And then, uh, yeah, the, the demo basically ends. He walks into a bar. Walking into the bar where the wake is happening, where everyone is. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're developers talk like there's going to be conflict there, right? How is he going to handle being with all of these people, including his ex-girlfriend, mm-hmm. um, probably including his friend's wife, uh, and who knows who else is in there and, and what kinds of different attitudes and what else might have happened that we don't know yet uh, between him and these other people uh, in town. Yeah, I just... I really love the premise of this Blood Earth kind of returning to this town after being away for so long. So your character and you have a history, have all this backstory, but because you've been away for so long, then now you're free to kind of imprint like your sensibilities and, and kind of what's going on uh, with your character now, which I like. You kind of a, it's kind of like a fresh slate, but you already have a history. I think it's a cool kind of place to to jump into with a character. So yeah, so the mind palaces and the devil, the two really kind of distinguishing things here. They say that there's more going on with the mind palace that they're not revealing until closer to launch. So they're holding some secrets back. Definitely was. Uh, they they mm-hmm. equated this to a psychological thriller like movies, long tracking shots, yeah. moody lighting. So it's definitely a game you want to go in blind to, probably, you know, knowing as little story beats as possible. You know, it's probably hard to kind of spoil this game because you have so many choices. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting one. Yeah. But overall, like I don't feel like the story has grabbed me too much just yet. I think the devil is pro- again, that's probably the most interesting thing, the aspect of it just from mechanics mm-hmm. and like a psychological aspect of it. But uh, yeah, still has a little bit of that don't nod stiffness, a little bit yeah. of time to get used to characters. Yeah, a little stiff, uh, just the animations, like the the voice, you know, the lip sync and stuff. I know that's so nitpicky, but you know, it kind of that uncanny valley where it looks really realistic, but it's kind of unnatural. So. But, but yeah, Blood Earth, man. I'm invested, obviously, because of Don't Nod. Uh, and I just get invested in characters immediately, man. Like, this guy's story, like, I want to know, dude. I want to help Joan. Like, I want to I wanna make things right. <laughs> yeah, I, I likewise have really been a fan of their games and Super Massive and Detroit Become Human. And so this is very much along those lines. So yeah, looking forward to see more. Absolutely, Blood Earth. Thanks for the chat. Thank you.